Hey guys, have you ever been so into a movie, a television show, or a video game that you wish you could actually be a part of it? Speaking for myself, I know I would have did absolutely anything to be a student at Hogwarts and party with Fred and George Weasley, but I mean, hey, who wouldn't, right? Anyways, what if I told you there was a product on the market that was able to immerse you in whatever fantasy that you wanted to be a part of? Well, it's your lucky day, because I'm here to convince you to purchase your first virtual reality headset. Now. I know what you're thinking. Mikey, we already know about VR. This isn't anything new to us. Well, although you're familiar with the concept of virtual reality and the people who use these headsets for immersive gaming experiences, I'm going to try to shed light on the future of VR outside of gaming. Virtual reality headsets have been out for a while now, but they're making improvements more and more every day. VR has an incredibly wide window for innovation due to the ability to bring life to almost anything that developers can imagine. Also, it's still in its very early stages, like a Nintendo 64 kind of era if you want to call it. So as far as we can tell, the sky is the limit for this tech and we should be excited for what's to come down the line. Have you ever wanted to be in Paris, standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, snapping some selfies with your friends? Or even taking a deep dive off the coast of South Africa with some great white sharks? You know what? Maybe you just want to ride a hot air balloon up into space and watch skyscrapers shrink to the size of ants before your very eyes. These are all things you can do within your own home. Yes, the comfort of your own home at any random time of your choosing if you have a virtual reality headset. I remember one of the first apps I opened when I got my Oculus Quest 2 was Google Earth VR. And essentially, I was able to travel to any random city or country of my choosing. The curiosity and creativity of these developers is truly what keeps pushing VR forward and expands on what we can do while we're inside these headsets. Our gaming experiences are a reflection of what they're into. For example, fans of the horror genre have been absolutely spoiled in VR. One of their favorite experiences that they hold dearly in this community is a game called Face Your Fear. Face Your Fear is a world in which users can do essentially just that, facing their fears of whatever it is, whether that be being trapped in a room with spiders or even strolling through a cemetery in the dead of the night. Now, even though this is just a video game, you're completely immersed in everything that's going on around you. So even though you are in fact safe, the experience feels super realistic. Now, if you're into horror or thrills or just a pure old adrenaline junkie, then VR will give you hours on hours of heart racing experiences to choose from. Well, as I mentioned earlier, VR gives you the opportunity to live through these experiences without actually being there in person. So this can help someone confront the things that make them uncomfortable. VR therapy isn't even a brand new concept and is already being used today. In an article by Laura Brewer posted to the Dynamic Consultants Group website, she touched on how one therapist used VR to treat alcohol addiction. Now, subject will be able to place themselves in a location like a bar or a party while the therapist will waft scents of alcohol at them. This could sound like torture to anyone out there struggling with alcoholism, but the patient at hand surprisingly said this was an eye-opening experience and helped him get over his triggers. Now, when I came across that article, I found it really interesting and truly remarkable that that was even a possibility. But in my opinion, they need to focus on how they can use VR more in a space like that. Pretty cool, right? Something like VR therapy is a cool concept, but it's just one tiny category of what the future of VR has in store for itself. I'd like to bring us to another small niche in the VR community that I think has an interesting future. First, let's go back to that time most of us in the world want to forget about. Yes, people, I'm talking about the year 2020. We all remember when the world got turned upside down by the hard-hitting impact of the coronavirus which in turn affected our lives by thrusting us into a virtual-based world to maintain and save our economy. Most of us that are in school or working full-time jobs are now spending most of this time virtually rather than actually being there in person. There are many business meetings taking place in virtual conference rooms like Zoom every day. And although this was never supposed to be a permanent solution, a lot of people love working from home and the programs that make these opportunities possible. So. What if instead of being on that conference call in front of your computer monitor, you could actually be there in the conference room via virtual reality? 
Programs like Spatial allow you to take a selfie of yourself, which will in turn be generated to a 3D avatar, which other users will be able to see. Your avatar mimics your movements in real time. Within the program, you can use all your favorite tools, such as screen sharing any app or window, and even uploading 3D models into the virtual space. For the creative types out there, I'd like to tell you about a game that I stumbled across a couple weeks ago called Tribe XR. Tribe XR is a VR game which allows you to use realistic DJ equipment to play your own music from within your headset. This game even comes with a virtual instructor who will show you the basics of DJing. And even allows you to join private rooms with your friends and play your music for each other. Now, when I say realistic equipment, I mean just that. Realistic. The Pioneer DJ CDJ 3000 is worth over $2,000 and I have no DJ experience whatsoever. So of course I would never spend that much money on DJ equipment. However, for the price of just $30, I was able to purchase Tribe and teach myself how to DJ. I get tutorials and lessons from inside the game while I use that same professional equipment that I mentioned earlier, which is something I find extremely cool. There's even a game called VR Tuos, which teaches you how to play piano in VR. I haven't even tried it myself yet, but the game allows you to sit in front of an actual physical piano while the inside the headset, the notes float down at you above the keys that you're supposed to touch. Now, speaking for myself, I think this is far more convenient than having to read music the old school way. So if this seems like something interesting to you, maybe you should give it a try. And if you're into learning an instrument, but just don't have the budget to buy the high-end equipment or pay for an instructor, then these are great alternatives for a low price. And you won't feel bad about wasting your money if you ever decide to ditch that musical expedition you decided to go on. Now, I know you're probably wondering, hey Mikey, where can I get myself a VR headset? Well, high-end headsets like the Valve Index will cost you over $1,000 and come with a long and hard installation process. You have to mount these base stations on your walls so they can be able to track your movements, which is a headache in its own. On top of this, you must already own a VR capable computer or you won't even be able to play these games. While Valve is a titan in the gaming industry, they have been met by some healthy competition through Facebook's Oculus Quest 2. The Quest 2 changes the game and innovates VR by being the first standalone headset, meaning you don't need a PC to be able to power it. Oculus also uses a different tracking system to where they don't need those pesky base stations at all. So, in conclusion, whether you're a thrill seeker, looking to show your creative side, or even just love technology, you might be interested in purchasing yourself a VR headset. I myself believe that VR is the future of technology and should be focused on a lot more, especially outside of gaming itself. We are still in the very early stages of virtual reality. And if I let my imagination run wild, I can envision a world in where we don't even need headsets to access VR. It might be integrated into something as small as contact lenses. I know that's a super reach, it wouldn't be possible anytime soon, but let's remember that one of the first high-end headsets came out in April of 2016, which was only roughly five years ago. So imagine what VR will be like 20 to 30 years from now.